I'm very excited about today's character build because we're going to take a look at one of the new psionic character classes and this one in particular is a lot of fun with skills because we get to use what are called sonic dice that are going to be able to what do you mean I'm saying it wrong it's not sonic that psionic dice psionic dice are you sure let me check psionic well crap my apologies up until about the 42 minute mark of this video i'm going to be pronouncing that incorrectly but hope you still enjoy the video and let's get started Hello there adventurers and welcome to Wall ADM. Today we're going to do a character build on a Soul Knife Rogue. Now for those of you that are familiar with my character builds, I do not build on optimization but more on themes. And today's theme is going to be to utilize our abilities of the Soul Knife Rogue with in particular our dice that help with our skill checks and our skill abilities. And so we're going to build a thematic character around skills. Now I do know that you can build a character class or a character type called a skill monkey and that involves a lot of multi-classing now at the end of the video i'll throw out a few multi-class options if i were to decide to take that route but today we're going to stick with a straight build of a soul knife rogue we're going to start at level one and we're going to advance this character all the way up to level 12 and i'll explain everything that i pick along the way so let's get started this is going to be kaya von borg and she is going to be my half elf soul knife rogue so let's begin with our level one rogue now kaya is going to eventually have 13 different skills that she's proficient in and there are 18 skills altogether so we will be missing five so as we build this character we're going to want to kind of plan out which ability scores are going to be most important to us with their relation to the skill and we're also going to need to plan out what skills we wish to acquire and at what points now a lot of this is going to be determined as to what type of a campaign we're playing if you're playing a more role heavy campaign then you're going to want to look into charisma type skills such as persuasion deception intimidation if you're playing more of an exploration and a campaign like that maybe you're going to want intelligence based stuff such as arcana and history and of course you've got your wisdom skills so if you're looking at more of a nature campaign you know survival and animal handling may be the route for you to go but i'm going to build this as a general character overall without any inside influence so let's take a look at our ability scores first now i picked half elf because we get a plus two modifier to one ability score and a plus one to another and a plus one to another and i thought that would be very beneficial for us and we also get to pick two skills with no restrictions now if you're not wanting to play a half elf a variant human is another option you'll get one skill and one feat that would actually probably help you get your skills a lot faster but i decided to not go that route and you could also take a look at i believe it is the changeling and a tabaxi both of them also get two skills in in the very beginning so those are other options should you choose not to want to play a half elf but with my ability scores i wanted to stay fairly even now constitution has no skills in there so having a plus bonus is only going to help our saving throws and our hit points now as far as a soul knife rogue is concerned our attacks are going to be at a range distance so we're going to want to try to stay away from combat as much as we can so I decided to put our constitution at a 10. Now, I am a big fan of having a higher constitution, but we're going to take those ability points and we're going to move them into other areas where we're going to have proficiency or at least get some help when we roll for our skills. Now, strength also has a 10. The only skill that goes off of strength is athletics. So at one point, we'll probably become proficient with athletics to help with that bonus. But since there's only one skill that depends on it, I decided having a 10 in it is okay. So with our bonus from our half elf and our point buy, we're going to have a 17 in dexterity. That's and then I decided to use my modifiers and my point buy system to have wisdom and charisma, both at 14. I wanted to do this because I'm going to take a more of a look at perception and survival and skills like that I, I also decided to go with charisma because i want my character to be very charismatic and able to hold a conversation and be very influential that way but having an intelligence of 12 it's not lagging too far behind so i'm not going to be afraid to pick a few of those skills 
So let's talk about her skills since that's our main theme and focus of this character build. Now to begin, a rogue is going to get four skills plus proficiency in thieves tools. So we've got that. We get two skills from our half elf and we get two skills from our background. So that's a total of eight different skills that we're going to be proficient in at first level. And the result of that is going to be an acrobatics, deception, insight, investigation, perception, persuasion, sleight of hand, and stealth. One of the skills that I can tell you already that I won't be including as far as proficiency is going to be intimidation. The way that I look at intimidation and persuasion is I look at that as two different ways to role play my character. I want to be more of a smooth talker, more of a um, a nicer person that uses charm and conversation to be able to get places. Now, I could play this character total opposite and be a little bit more mean and intimidating and things like that. And then I would have picked intimidation, but I don't feel that we need both persuasion and intimidation. There are instances where one would probably be better than the other, but I think for the most part, these two skills are going to be depending on the personality of your character and how you depend on and how you intend on playing them. So I'm going the sweeter, nicer, more conversational route with persuasion. Now let's take a quick gander at our armor class. We would start with a leather armor, but I took into account that I would probably have enough gold at first level, maybe from selling a few of my weapons or what have you, or manipulating it, or just asking my dungeon master if I can have it. But I went with this studded leather that is going to give us one more bonus of an armor class. And with our dexterity modifier being a plus three, that's going to give us a 15. Now we're only going to be able to get this up to 16 and we will do that at level four, but we'll talk about that more at that level. It's the multi-classing things if you want a skill monkey that you'll be able to get a better armor class in. But honestly, a 15 or a 16 for a rogue that is going to be concentrating on ranged attacks and staying away from folks and staying out of melee combat isn't too bad. I, I think it'll be just fine. Now as a level one rogue, one of our abilities that we get is called expertise. That means we get to pick two of our skills and whenever we make a check on them, we can double our proficiency bonus. And at level one, we have a plus two bonus to our skills. So the two that I decided to be expertise on, the first one is perception. That is, in my opinion, one of the most widely used skills and the DM is also always seems to be asking for a perception role or using passive perception. So with that in mind, I thought it would be a great one to start off with, with expertise. So whenever we are asked to roll for a perception, we're going to have a plus six. That is a plus two from our wisdom and then plus two doubled, which is plus four from our proficiency bonus. I'm also a big fan of stealth and that is the second one I chose to get expertise in. So now with our dexterity of a plus three and our proficiency bonus modifier doubled, we're sitting at a plus seven when it comes to stealth rolls. Now do keep in mind that I foregoed my opportunity to have expertise in my thieves tools. So I am proficient in thieves tools, but I chose not to have expertise as I want to concentrate on my skills. And this isn't going to be a classic thief or rogue where we're going to be dependent on as far as picking locks and stuff. I mean, we will still have that ability to do so, but we're not going to be super duper fantastic with the expertise. Now, as far as the other things are concerned, we get thieves can't at level one, which means we can use signs and signals to communicate with others that know that type of code language. We also get sneak attack. So at level one and level two, we're going to be using a short sword. And then at level three, we're going to ditch all of our weapons. And I'll explain to that when we get there. So with our short sword, we have attack options of a plus five to hit because we're using this with our dexterity. And we're going to do a D6 plus three of piercing damage. Now, if we have advantage on that attack, then we can use our sneak attack and add an additional D6. So if we have a fighter that that's engaged with a with an enemy and we get in there with our short sword as well we're going to be able to get our sneak attack bonus so that is going to do it for level one let's advance to level two and see what's next in store for our half elf rogue 
So here we are, Kaya is now a level 2 character. She only has 13 hit points, and again, some of that's going to be because of our low constitution score. We're not getting an additional bonus to that. Now at level 2, a rogue only gets one ability, and that ability is called Cunning Action. So Cunning Action reads, starting at second level, your quick thinking and agility allow you to move and act quickly. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat. This action can be used only to take the dash, disengage, or hide action so if we are in melee combat with a foe and we want to get out of there because we're low on hit points and we can use our bonus action to get out of there by disengaging and put a little bit of distance between us and honestly that is all that I have for you for level two nothing else really changes so let's see what happens when we get our soul knife rogue abilities at level three so Kaya is now a level 3 rogue and we get to pick our archetype which is going to be the soul knife. This is a psychic type of a character. They're going to be able to use their mind in order to better have better performance with their skills and abilities and things like that. And they're also going to be able to manifest weapons in their hands. Now these are going to be like psychic blades that we can throw for damage. So let's take a look at that first because it's very very interesting and it's one of my favorite features of the class. Here on D&D Beyond, we can click on our class features and we are going to take a look at our Psychic Blades. So our Psychic Blades read as follows. You can manifest your sonic power as shimmering blades of psychic energy. Whenever you take the attack action, you can manifest a blade from your free hand and make the attack with a blade. The Magic Blade is a simple melee weapon with the finesse and throne properties. It has a normal range of 60 feet and no long range. And, and on a hit, it deals psychic damage equal to a d6 plus the ability modifier used for the attack roll. Now the blade vanishes immediately after it hits or misses and its target and it leaves no mark on its target if it deals damage. Now when we attack with the blade we can make a melee or range weapon attack with a second psychic blade as a bonus action on the same turn. So we can have our attack action which is our main psychic blade but then we can bonus action with our other hand and throw a second Sonic Blade. Now here on D&D Beyond, it has this broken down for us nicely. We have our Psychic Blades. It is going to be based on Dexterity. So we can just as a free action generate or create a psychic blade in our hand and we can either attack with it in melee combat or we can throw it. Now if we throw it we're going to get a plus five to hit and then we have a d6 plus three of psychic damage. So here we go rolling a 12 plus five is 17 that's probably going to hit and then and then we're going to roll our psychic damage on top, which would be nine points. And then don't forget, if we have advantage on this attack, we're also going to be able to add our sneak attack. And I believe our sneak attack goes up to 2d6. So we would cause nine points of psychic. And then we would also get to roll our sneak attack damage if we had advantage for an additional four points. So these are my psychic blades. Now, as I'm going to roleplay this character with Kaya, I'm dumping all of my weapons. I'm going to make her a charismatic character that is going to engage in a lot of conversation, but she is not going to have any weapons on her. She's not going to, not even a dagger. And she's just going to mainly rely on being able to generate her psychic blades when it comes time for combat. And I would probably use that to be able to manipulate going into places where we're like conversating or trying to work out a truce or something like that being able to go in unarmed but still have that ability to generate my blades is going to be really cool now that is our attack option with our sonic powers but we also get two more abilities let's take a look at psychic whispers you harbor a wellspring of sonic energy within yourself the energy is represented by your sonic energy dice which are a d6 you have a number of these dice equal to twice your proficiency bonus, and they fuel various sonic powers you have, which are detailed below. What this is basically saying is we have sonic dice, and being at third level, we have a proficiency bonus of plus two. So we have four of these D6 dice. Now, as we progress in levels, of course, our proficiency bonus is going to go up, so we'll get more of those sonic dice, but we'll also be able to elevate our dice. So at fifth level, those are going to be D8s. At 11th levels, D10s. And at 17th levels, those are D12s. So they level with us, which is really cool. 
Now, our main focus of using these sonic dice is going to be our Psy Bolstered Knack, which reads, when your non-sonic training fails you, your sonic power can help if you fail an ability check using a skill or tool with which you are, have proficiency, you can roll one sonic energy die and add the number rolled to your check, potentially turning failure into success. Now, the good thing about this is you expend that die only if the roll succeeds. So let's take a look at to how these work. So let's take acrobatics, for instance. Perhaps we're trying to jump from rock to rock in some type of water or pool. And we roll a seven and we have acrobatics of plus five. So that's going to be a 12. And the DM says, nope, sorry, you don't make it and you fall into water. But like, well, wait a minute. I would like to expend one of my sonic dies to give it a try. And if we roll, let's say a five, making it a 17, then the DM will probably tell us if it was a DC 15 that we succeed on the roll. But now let's say we roll a 1. So instead of being a 17, we roll 12 plus 1 is a 13. And the DM says, no, I'm sorry, you still fail. Now on that failure, we still get to keep our Sonic die so we can use it again on a future skill check. But now if we did make it with the 17, then that will expend our Sonic die as a result of the success of the skill check. Now you can kind of see with this ability why I want to build a character that is based on skills. I want her to have all of the skills that she can and I want her as a soul knife rogue just to be able to succeed and very rarely fail. We also get psychic communication or powers to be able to telepathically speak with others. This is going to be called psychic whispers and we can use this as an action and choose up to two creatures we can see. This is based on our proficiency bonus which right now is a plus two. So at this level two creatures we can see and then roll one sonic energy die which is a d6. For a number of hours equal to the number rolled the chosen creature can speak telepathically with you and you can speak telepathically with them as long as you are with when as long as you are within one mile you and the creatures don't need to speak a common language to understand each other now we can actually use our psychic whispers once per day without expending a sonic energy die as seen here on dnd beyond we're going to get one use per long rest now after that we can use it again but then we'll have to expend that sonic energy die when we roll to see how many hours this is vital for so really cool ability being able to talk or speak telepathically with our with our companions and our adventuring friends is going to come in quite handy and it's even better than message where you can actually be physically seen talking with each other so uh, very good ability now those are the three abilities for the soul knife rogue we actually get a new rogue ability and this is from tasha's cauldron of everything and this one is going to be called steady aim so with steady aim as a bonus action, we can give ourselves advantage on our next attack roll on the current turn. You can use this bonus action only if you haven't moved during this turn. And after you use the bonus action, your speed is zero until the current turn. So this is going to allow us to be able to engage our sneak attack. So let's come back over here and take a look at our attack options. We have the psychic blades. And if you remember, this is our main attack, which is a D6 plus three. And then we can also use our psychic blades again as a bonus action which is going to be a d4 plus three so instead of using that bonus action for a second attack, we can use steady aim as long as we haven't moved yet this turn. And again, Kaya is going to be built to be a ranged rogue. She does not want to be in melee combat. Her hit points and are not good enough and her armor class is just okay. So we're going to be attacking from afar. So if we are in a safe distance within 60 feet, of course, because that's our distance of our attack, then we can use our bonus action for steady aim. Then we will have advantage on our main psychic blades attack and we'll get a d6 plus three of psychic damage and then we'll also get our 2d6 of sneak attack damage should that first attack hit so oh, there is a lot going on at level three this is our main level if i were to pick a level three character to play 
this would be a great one to pick just because there's so much great stuff going on with the character at this level. So just to recap, we got three abilities as far as being a soul knife rogue. We have the ability to telepathically speak with our friends. We have psychic blades that just appear in our hands that we can throw or we can use in combat, totally eliminating most uses for regular weapons. And then we also have our sonic ability to be able to perhaps succeed on a skill check where we may have failed and we have our steady aim that if we really want to concentrate and as long as we hold still and don't move then we can get advantage and possibly trigger our sneak attack and if you remember i did take a stealth at expertise so perhaps we're moving stealthily around i get that plus seven i succeed or if i don't succeed on my stealth i'll use my sonic ability die to succeed and then once i get in position use my steady aim and get that sneak attack out so that is Kaya at level 3. Let's advance her up and take our first feat at level 4. So Kaya Von Borg is now a level 4 Soul Knife Rogue. And we get our feat. And the feat that I have chosen to pick is going to be the Skill Expert. So with Skill Expert, we get to pick one skill that we can become proficient in. So this is going to take us from 8 skills to 9. We get to pick one skill that we can have expertise in. Again, when you make a check in that proficient skill, you get to double your proficiency bonus. And we also get to pick one ability score and add a plus 1. So as you can see, I decided to put the plus one to our ability score to dexterity. That'll make it an 18. That's going to help with our armor class, which is now 16. It's going to help with our checks as far as our skill checks for dexterity. So our stealth, for example, is now a plus eight. That is going to help with our two hit with our psychic blades, taking that up to a plus six a hit and also an extra point of psychic damage. Now, the one skill that I decided to become proficient in is Arcana. It was between that and survival i feel that just in a vacuum being able to add arcana is usually a skill that is very good to have so now we have proficiency in that and i put my expertise in acrobatics that now puts us at a plus eight so we're going to be able to do fun maneuvers and i can see kaya definitely being very athletic and being able to need to jump out of the way a lot of times or or being able to maneuver and things like that and i want her to be able to succeed again our hit points are low we're looking at only 23 hit points at level four so i don't want her to fall in the water or fall in the lava pit or something like that that the dia may have planned so having our acrobatics at a plus eight should help constitute a uh, success most of the time. That's all I have for you for level four. Let's take a look at our soul knife rogue when she advances to level five. So Kaya Von Borg is now a level five soul knife rogue. She's going to get one additional ability, but we're going to have quite a few abilities that are going to have our powers enhanced. Let's take a look at our rogue ability first, and that is uncanny dodge. Starting at fifth level, when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use a reaction to have the attacks damage against you. So this is a fantastic reaction. Let's say we get hit by a Zentarum soldier for 14 points of damage. We can let our DM know that we like to use our uncanny dodge as a reaction, and we're only going to take half or seven points of that damage. A nice ability to have that is a all around good purpose ability for the rogue. Our proficiency bonus went up to a plus three, and our proficiency bonus has a wide array of effects on our character. Most prominent is going to be our skills. So any skill where proficiency onus now gets a plus three modifier, and those that we have expertise in are going to have that doubled, so it will be actually a plus six. So if you take a look at our acrobatics and our stealth, we're sitting at plus 10 on our rolls. And don't forget that we have our sonic ability that if we still fail, let's say we roll a two with our acrobatics check for a total of 12, then we can add our sonic ability die to that. Let's say we roll a six and, we, and then we could take that 12 to an 18. So those sonic dice are extremely nice to have. Speaking of which, our sonic power is improving at this point. So you though I just said a d6 at fifth level that's actually going to be a d8 because I forgot all about this that at fifth level we go from a d6 d6 sonic die to a d8 so that acrobatics check could have went from a 12 to a d8 
Dirty 20. That's really, really good. And we also get more of them. So remember, when we use these for our skill checks, if we fail that skill check, we don't have to expend a die. But if we do succeed on that skill check, then we do expend that die. And since that the number of dice that we have, or Sonic dice, is uh, based on our proficiency bonus. It is two times our proficiency bonus at level five. We now have six Sonic dice to use and they are now D8s. That is absolutely amazing and I love it. Our final thing of note as far as being fifth level is concerned is our sneak attack bonus is now a 3d6. So our rogue is looking really good. She's good at abilities and her attacks are going to be magnificent. So let's take her up the next level and see what happens at level six. So here we are on D&D Beyond with our level 6 Soul Knife Rogue, Kaya Von Borg. Now the only ability we get at this level is another dose of expertise. And again, that is going to give two of our skills a double proficiency bonus. Now I must reiterate that I am picking skills that I feel are kind of on a generic general overall level as if in a vacuum. They are probably more of my favorite skills or ones that I see occur more in games. And so that is what I'm selecting for this video. Now, as far as you're concerned, you're going to want to think about two different things when you're picking your skills and your expertise. And the first one is, is what type of a character and personality you want to play. And the second one is, is what kind of a game are you in? If you're in more of an urban role-playing environment, then you're going to want to go heavy on those charisma skills and you're also probably going to want to dip into some of that wisdom with regards to perception and insight and things of that nature if you're more in the wilderness and things like that then you're going to want to dig into the nature and survival and animal handling if you're doing a lot of exploration then intelligent type skills as far as like arcana and history and religion and things like that might be more up your alley or since our ability scores are pretty even across the board with regards to intelligence wisdom and charisma you can pretty much fill things in from there. So, so what I have chosen for my character is to put expertise into insight. I want her to be able to read people fairly well or read situations fairly well. And I also put expertise into investigation and that falls into line with traps. Now I could have went with the thieves tool expertise and I may do that in the future. Again, it would depend on what type of game I'm playing. But the way I'm looking at it right now is I want to look for traps, which is expertise and perception, figure out how they work, which which is expertise and investigation. And then I've got my thieves tools that I'm proficient in. So maybe somewhere down the line, I'll get expertise and thieves tools as well. So that's all for level six. Let's jump ahead to level seven and see what's next in store. So here we are at level seven, and this is going only going to provide moderate changes. The first one is, is our sneak attack bonus is going to go from a 3d6 to a 4d6. So that's always a nice feature to have. And then we're also going to get another base rogue ability, and this one is called evasion. Beginning at seventh level, we can nimbly dodge out of the way of certain area effects, such as an ancient red dragon's fiery breath or an ice storm spell. When you're subjected to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw, throw to only take half damage you instead take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw and only half damage if you fail so this is going to be very very good for us we already are sitting at a plus seven to our dexterity saving throws and now if we get hit with a fireball we make the saving throw we're not going to take any damage evasion is extremely important for this type of build again we have very low hit points level seven we only have 38 and we're going to be an evasive type of a character build so that's that's all we have for level seven. Let's shoot ahead to level eight and take our next feat that's going to enhance this character. So we are back on D&D Beyond with Kaya Von Borg. She is a level eight half elf soul knife rogue and we are going for a skill type of theme but still sticking with a single class now i picked a feat called skilled and with skilled you get to pick three additional skills to be proficient in so i looked through the list of what we had left and i decided that it was time to be proficient in athletics because our strength is at a zero so we have absolutely no bonus to athletics now this would help with climbing or maybe lifting things or things of that nature. So I'm sure that this is going to fall into my ranking of skills to get. So I chose athletics and then I thought religion would probably come in handy. 
Our characters live in a world of gods and things of that nature, so I feel that religion gets just a little bit of a smidge higher than history, but of course if your DM likes to run a lot of things about the lore of the world and stuff like that, then you may want to flip-flop it and go with history instead of religion. And then I also pick survival. I always feel that this is a good one to have, whether it comes to being lost in the wilderness or just things that will help you with your instincts and the world that surrounds you. Now that is going to give us 12 of the 13 skills that we'll eventually get, but we have a little bit ways off before we get our next one. So let's go to level nine and see what happens next with our soul knife rogue abilities. So we're back and this time we're at level nine and a lot of our abilities are going to level up for us. And we're also going to get some of our rogue archetype abilities. So a lot of good things happening for us here. The first thing I'd like to mention is our proficiency bonus is now a plus four. And this is going going to affect all of our skills that we are proficient in. So especially those that we have expertise, as you can see our deck space ones, we've got like a plus 12, which is absolutely amazing. So the lowest we can roll on like an acrobatics or a stealth is going to be a 13. And we still have our D8 sonic die that we can add to that if we only roll a one or a two and we need that little bit extra. So fantastic. The proficiency bonus is also going to help us with our psychic blade attacks. And again, our character build is going to be totally weaponless. Uh, she is going to be able to generate these psychic blades that she can throw the main one with an action, a secondary one with a bonus action, or we can use our steady aim feature and get advantage with the main one and then possibly add our sneak attack if we hit. And that's now looking good with that proficiency bonus going up at a plus eight to hit. And that is a D6 plus four of psychic damage if we hit. And at level nine, we are now up to five D6 of psychic damage, or I'm sorry, 5d6 of sneak attack so it looks really good for us to not take that movement position ourselves really well whether we use that plus 12 to stealth but get ourselves in a position where we can wield and throw one of our psychic blades with advantage hit for the psychic plus add the sneak attack that is fantastic now with regards to our class we're going to get a level nine ability as part of being a soul knife rogue and this one's called soul blades your psychic blades are now an experience expression of your psi suffused soul, giving you these powers that use your sonic energy dice. We get two abilities. The first one is homing strikes. If you make an attack roll with your psychic blades and you miss the target, you can roll one sonic energy die and add the number rolled to the attack roll. If this causes the attack to hit, you expend the sonic energy die. Now, again, we have sonic energy die, which are one of the key features to the this class. We get a number of them per long rest equal to two times our proficiency bonus. So here at level nine, we get eight uses of those, and those are going to be D8s at this level. Now with homing strikes, it's going to be very similar to our skill abilities. If we miss, we don't expend that. So there's very little to worry about if we use a sonic dice and it fails we we don't lose it which is an amazing option and it really puts a mind to rest it's unlike where a spell where let's say you try to cast charm person you're expending that spell slot and it may or may not work it, you may have I don't want to say wasted it, but it is just going to be gone. Whereas opposed to our skill checks, and now with homing strikes, we can use that sonic die. And if we still fail, then we don't lose it. Fantastic. The next ability with our soul blades is psychic teleportation. As a bonus action, you manifest one of your psychic blades, expending one sonic energy die and roll it. And you throw the blade at an unoccupied space. You can see up to a number of feet equal to 10 times the number rolled. You then teleport to that space and the blade vanishes. So we roll our sonic energy die and let's say we roll a three, we go 10 times three is going to equal 30 feet. Then we can have that blade, we can throw it 30 feet and we teleport to that location as a bonus action. For those of you that are familiar with my character builds, one of my all time favorite spells is Misty Step. And this is basically Misty Step for this character. And it is absolutely awesome. So we use 
psychic teleportation by we generate a one of our blades in our hand and as a bonus action we roll that die multiply it by by 10 we throw that out there and that's how many feet away we can teleport fantastic abilities level 9 is definitely one of the best levels for a soul knife rogue so that's all i have for you for level 9 let's move up to level 10 and see what's next in store and we're back on D&D Beyond with our level 10 Soul Knife Rogue, Kaya Von Borg. Now we get an ability score improvement or a feat at this level. And as previously mentioned, I was only going to take one feat that gave us an ability score modifier. And I'm actually done making my ability score adjustments. So if you have the option at level 1 to roll for your ability scores, and you can get a 17 or 18 into dex at level 1, then that is probably going to be the most beneficial for you. That way when you take the skilled feat, that we took earlier that gave you that plus one to dex you and plus your plus two racial modifier you can have that dexterity up to a 20 at level four but the way things are i'm fine with the 18 i again i want to focus more on my theme now we do have one more feat left that will help us get that 13th skill and even expertise in a skill of our choosing but we're going to put that off until level 12 and instead i decided to choose the lucky feat at level 10. now lucky feat for those of you that don't know you get three luck points whenever you make an attack roll an ability check or a saving throw you can spend one luck point to roll an additional d20 you can choose to spend one of your luck points after you roll the die but before the outcome is determined you choose which of the d20s is used for the attack roll ability check or the saving throw now it's also mentioned that you can use that for an attack made against you which could also become very beneficial if a monster scores a crit hit against you then you can expend a lucky feat and make that monster re-roll their attack roll or the their d20 but one of our main purposes is on some of these ability checks that we need to make let's take an athletics for some for instance we only have a plus four to athletics so let's say we roll a three three plus four is seven even if we use one of our our sonic dice say a d8 and we roll three we're going to have a 10. so instead of expending that sonic die right away we can use the lucky feet and re-roll the skill check from the base from the d20 so i think the lucky feet goes very well with a skill focused character and i think level 10 is a great opportunity to pick it up and one of my other favorite abilities is coming up at level 11 so let's skip right up to our next level and take a look to see what's going on so Kaya is now a level 11 half elf rogue. Now again, she only has 58 hit points, so she's going to need to be very careful, especially in combat heavy environments. Now, one of the class abilities that we get as a level 11 rogue, and this is just for the base rogue feature, is reliable talent. By 11th level, you have refined your chosen skills until they approach perfection. Whenever you make an ability check that lets you add your proficiency bonus, you can treat a d20 roll of 9 or lower as a 10. So for all of the skills, and we have 12 of them at this point, that we are proficient in, we cannot roll lower than a 10. So if we roll a four on our athletics check, that is going to be a 10. And then we can still roll our sonic die on top of that using our psionic power. So we get that extra D8. And we've still got the lucky feat too. So if we want to re-roll or use a luck point on that original D20 roll, we can do that. So reliable talent is going to make sure that all of the skills that we are proficient in, and that's 12 of them, there's going to be very little chance that we are going to fail. And if we fail, or if we need to get it just a little bit higher, we've got those sonic dice that are going to help us get there. And what's great about level 11 is we are actually going to now be able to roll a D10 for our sonic dice. So we have eight chances with those, and now they're a, a D10 coming up from a d8 on the previous levels so that is fantastic look at all these skills we're probably not going to fail them very rarely are we going to fail and if we roll that natural one then we use that lucky feet to re-roll it and this is just absolutely fantastic i am super excited about this 
And of course, our main attack is our Psychic Blades, and I'm really going to enjoy using that Steady Aim with them so I can make sure I get that Sneak Attack bonus, and our Sneak Attack at level 11 goes up to 66. So we can still hold our own in the ranged combat using our Psychic Blades, and then we've got our skills, and the character is very well-rounded and should be a lot of fun to play. Now we're going to do one more level, so let's do level 12, and then we'll take a look at a few of the abilities and discuss more multi-classing before we call it a wrap. So here we are, Kaya is now a level 12 rogue, and we are going to take another feat because we get to choose between an ability score improvement or a feat, and I have chosen the Prodigy feat. Now, if you're not familiar with that, it is only available to humans, half-orcs, or half-elves. And with that, we're going to learn an additional language, we're going to learn an additional skill, we're going to be able to pick expertise in a skill, and we're also going to be able to pick another tool. And I did forget to mention that during the build that we do have quite an array of different tools going on. We have a dice set, so we can be a little bit of a gambler. If you wanted to focus more on a gambler like that, you could put expertise into sleight of hand if you wanted to be a cheater. Um, insight will work really well with like a dice set or a playing card set or something like that where you can read your opponents. And I did just that with that extra tool set. I picked playing cards. So Kaya is going to be really good at dice and playing cards. And then she also has the forgery kit from her background and thieves tool. So you can get quite a few different tools. Uh, we've got four different ones here at level 12. So that is uh, really nice. And you add your proficiency bonus to those when you move on. Now, I did pick another skill, and the last skill that I picked was nature. And it was just kind of eh, whatever at, the, at this point, because I don't know what's going on in the campaign or the one-shot or whatever it is that I'm running this character. And expertise, I bumped up persuasion again, just as a role-playing mechanic and making her just this nice person that is very persuasive and easy to conversate with. So the skills that I didn't pick are animal handling, history, intimidation, medicine, and performance. But you could honestly make a case for any of those. And once again, and finally, it is going to be dependent on the type of game that you are included in that is as high as I'm going to level Kaya today. Let's take a look at a few of the Soul Knife abilities though to continue finishing out this video. So our Soul Knife Rogue is going to have two more levels where they're going to get abilities that are unique to them. At 13th level, we would get Psychic Veil. You could weave a veil of Psychic Static to mask yourself. As an action, you can magically become invisible along with anything that you are wearing or carrying for one hour or until you dismiss the effect. This invis invisibility ends early immediately after you deal damage to a creature or you force a creature to make a saving throw. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest or unless you expend a sonic energy die to use this feature again. Invisibility is another one of my favorite spells, probably top 10. And especially with the rogue and with the bonus to stealth that we have, we could turn invisible using our psychic fail. We could move in position, moving quietly with our stealth and be able to get our advantage on an attack, maybe even surprise, and get that sneak attack bonus damage. So Psychic Veil is definitely going to be fun, and the fact that we can use again by spending our psionic energy die is absolutely awesome. And then at 17th level, Rend Mind. You can sweep your Psychic Blades directly through a creature's mind. When you use your Psychic Blades to deal sneak attack damage to a creature, you can force that target to make a Wisdom saving throw, and if the save fails, the target is stunned for one minute. The stunned target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its, each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Once we use it, we can't use it again until we finish a long rest, or we expend three psionic energy dice to use it again. Another neat little ability, I, I like this. It's probably not one I would use very often. Our DC for whatever creature is going to be a DC 18 at this point in this level, a DC 19 if you get your dexterity up to 20. But it's it's neat. I could see some effects for it, but definitely probably not my favorite ability of the Soul Knife Rogue. But at 17th level, it's probably rare that I would ever make it up that high, so I would never have to worry about using it. But it's, it's nice to have it there. So let's discuss multi 
multi-classing. Now, the classes you're going to want to multi-class into, if you want to get all of the skills, be proficient in all of them, all 18, is going to be Bard and Cleric. And you will need a Charisma 13 and a Wisdom 13 in order to do so. And the way that we built this character, you should have no problem with that whatsoever. Now, you will need to multi-class at some point into knowledge cleric and again that's going to be dependent on the game that you're playing if you want to get a plus two to your armor class then i would suggest doing it earlier that way you can carry a shield and then just rely on your steady aim or however you see fit with that but as a knowledge cleric you're also going to be able to get arcana history nature or religion as your choice for two skills so becoming a knowledge cleric at first level you get to pick two of those skills and you'll actually be uh, have expertise in those two skills but it has to be two out of those four so that's going to take us from 13 skills to 14 15 skills so knowledge cleric one level and that the second one you'll need to do is going to be your lore bard so you're going to want to get at least to a level three bard and by doing that as soon as you multi-class into bard you're going to be able to pick a skill so we go from the 13 we had with the rogue by itself 14 15 with the cleric and now 16 by going into bard and then when you reach level three as far as a lore bard is concerned then you can pick three more skills and that's that's going to give us 19 out of the 18 possible skills so we can actually back up one of those we could take out the prodigy feat where we got that extra skill and we could use that feat for something else but ideally you want to get to level nine with this character you're going to want to have a level four soul knife rogue a level four college of lore bard and a level one knowledge cleric and one more final note is the knowledge cleric is also going to come with some cantrips and i believe having bless would help your party and also having guidance now guidance is a cantrip where you get to add a d4 to a skill check and you can use that on yourself so if you need to jump across a pond and you've got this at early levels and your acrobatics or your athletics isn't exactly where you want it then you can give yourself guidance before you do so and then not only that but then you can still add your psionic dice to that as well so guidance would make a nice little addition to this build so that's Kaya Von Borg, my half-elf soul knife rogue. And we advanced her all the way up to level 12 with a theme around skills. So let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of this build? And in particular, what did you think of the skills that we selected with regards to the skills and the expertise? Which ones would you prioritize over the ones that I chose today? And what did you think of the multi-class options? Would you rather play this character as is, as a soul knife rogue, advancing all the way up to the level level we did or would you be more enticed to pick some of the bard or cleric options and build a multi-class character thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this character build and on to the next